<laughs> Victory sign from Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's been uh, tweeting when he's not been out on the racetrack during this session. His Twitter handle is at Dale Jr. He wants Dale to, uh, Jr. That is. He wants a lot of time to be up here tonight. <laughs> See if Ryan Blaney runs it all the way to the line, or if he cuts it before the start finish line. <laughs> hmm. Those are the kind of things that make you go. Hmm. Now the only other reason I can think that they may do that is if the engine gets a little bit too hot and they missed on the tape. That's, that's the only other thing they can do. Because I tell you, these engine builders, they're for snickety about these engines. I mean, they got a number, and you better not miss it. Yeah, when he gets up into the top five, the fourth. That car is all, that car is always fast. Leonard Wood been down there tuning on it. <laughs> Jeremy Bowles, he's been beating on it. You know, Amarola up to second. I know, well. I, I didn't press that. I just looked up and saw his name. I said, holy cow, where'd that come from? That's a 61 to a, to a Logano 60. I mean, he's right there. So here's Jamie McMurray back out. Currently 22nd. Talked about how his teammate, Kyle Larson, third fastest. And he wants to see what happens when they do all those little tips and tricks. I do like what he said about a, a good-looking paint scheme. I, I, I will say, when you have a cool paint scheme, there is a little extra pep in your step when you hop in that car. Don't know if it makes it go any faster. No, it makes you feel better, though. When Dale Earnhardt Jr. rides off, Jeff wants to take a ride along from when that car launches on pit road. So let's do that. All right, here he goes. He's going right to red right line to on each shift. That's exactly what the engine tuners and builders tell him to do. He actually short shifted a little there. Yeah, he all the way red. Good. But I tell you, I've seen that pick up speed, that getting that, getting in high gear and let it eat. You see how nice and steady he is on the wheel? Turn that wheel any more than you have to. He does his typical Dale Jr. thing. He'll throw that right hand over there. That's interesting here. He didn't run the high line. He's just going straight to the bottom through three and four. See yeah. the same RPM, Jeff, about 8,300 down the front here. You can see basically they get to terminal velocity right about the start finish line, yeah. which is what you're looking for. So he's on 83, and then when he comes off, if he's like everybody else, he's probably going to get up 84, 85 down the back. And you hear the hit 80, see the spark, so the, you know, that car is down in the racetrack. I, I don't know if they wanted to hit quite that much, but they've definitely done their homework. Look at that valence, how it just flat and sealed up it is to the racetrack on the front, or the, sorry, the splitter. But that was a lot of sparks as he entered turn one. There's a pretty big bump in the middle one and two. Sometimes you'll hit harder down there. I thought that's just that little tan piece on the side right there, or that little side skirt. Not necessarily tan. Help, you got 8,400 here coming to the front. Oh, that's that's a line. That's pretty good. Quickest lap, 46.71. About a tenth off right there, but that's still a good lap. Yeah, so that's exactly what he's going to go through in qualifying tomorrow. I love that wheel spin as he came off pit road. Vince? You know, throughout the course of the day, we've documented some of the issues for Furniture Row and uh, not just Martin Truex Jr., but his teammate Eric Jones as well, and uh, what they've had to do to get through tech and get their cars ready to go. You've run one lap today, so you've been standing around doing a whole lot of nothing. How's that uh, testing your patience? I'm bored. I've definitely been looking for something to do hanging out in the trailer. I think we ran out of things to talk about. So it's been uh, an interesting day, to say the least, but we you know, we really only plan on making one run anyhow. We just we hoped, I guess, that it might have been a little bit earlier. <laughs> Wish you the best once you guys get things rolling. Chris? Yeah, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just ran his quickest lap in this practice session. And our team in the booth, they were watching you and your teammate out there. You guys shut the cars down right before the start finish line. Why would you guys do that? Uh, there's a lot of cat and mouse game going on uh, in the garage area right now. But, um, you know, I'm really happy with uh, the car that, uh, you know, Jimmy Finning and the guys have built at the shop. Doug Yates, as you see, a lot of the Fords got some good speed. So, uh, everybody's doing their part. We're just uh, trying to see what all uh, 
gains that we can make this practice session. We found a few gains. We found some that we thought were not uh, not a lot of gains. So uh, we'll go sift through all the data and, and figure out what uh, what all we're going to throw in it for uh, for tomorrow. So I think the, you know there could be a lot of surprises tomorrow after everybody watches practice and uh, you know you try to figure out who's got what. Uh, but our fast enough forward feels pretty good right now and uh, happy with all the work they put in. Well, tomorrow's an important day. Nobody's wanting to show their entire hand. If things go his way, that's a driver who could have his breakout season in 2017. I like that boy.